In this video, we're going to make the world class. We're going to use this to hold all of our locations and to also let us check to see if we're at a location, is there a location to the north, to the south, to the east, or to the west. I'll start by opening up the solution in Visual Studio and going into the engine project in the models folder. I'll create a new class called world. And I'll make this class public because we need to have it visible in a different project. Then I'll go into the game session class and create a new property to hold the world. And call it current world and add the getter and setter for it. What I could do next is in the game session constructor, add another line here that says current world equals new world. But we're going to need to do a lot of things with this world object. The first thing we're going to have to do is populate it with all of our locations. And right now we have these nine locations, but you might want to expand your game to have dozens or hundreds of locations. And we really don't want to do all of that work here in this game session constructor. So what I'm going to do is create another class that's called a factory class. A factory class is just a class you use to create other objects. This will give us a different place to create the world object and to populate all the locations. And it will also give us a way to expand in the future if we want to load the locations from a database or from a text file. Then we just would need to change that factory class to load the data from a different place. So I'll go into the engine project and add a new folder that I'll call factories. Now I'll go inside the factories folder, right click on that and add a new class that I'm going to call world factory. And this class I'm not going to make public. I only want to use this inside the engine project, so I'm going to make this an internal class. By default, when you create a class, its, its scope is set to internal. So if I left it like this, just saying class world factory, it would still be internal. But it's a good habit to explicitly type out the scope here, so you're always going to remember what it is. Now I want to create a function in the world factory class that we can call from game session and have it return a fully populated world. In order for the world factory class to know about the world class, we need to make sure it has access to the engine.models namespace because the world class is in engine.models and our world factory is in engine.factories. So I'll add a new using statement up here using engine.models. And I'll go inside the curly braces for the world factory class and create our new function that's going to create the world for us. To do that, I'm going to say internal world. This is going to be an internal function that can only be used inside the engine project. It's going to return a world object and I'm going to name the function create world. Right now we have some red squiggly lines underneath create world. If we hover over it, we can see there's an error because this function is not returning a world yet. So I'm going to say return new world. What this will do is it will instantiate a new world object and return that to whatever code called this function. So now if we go back to the game session class, instead of saying current world equals new world right here on line 33, I'm going to add a using statement for engine.factories so we have access to the world factory class and I'm going to replace current world equals new world with world factory 
factory equals new world factory. This will instantiate a new world factory object and store it in the factory variable. And the line where we populate the current world property, I'm going to say current world equals factory dot create world. So when we instantiate a game session object, after it creates the player in this location, it's going to create a world factory object. It's going to call the create world function, which is going to create a new world object and return that back so that we can put it into the current world property. But we still need to populate the world with all of the locations. So let's go into the world class. And now we need to store the location and objects in the world class. To do that, we're going to create a list that holds location objects. This is just going to be in a private variable. So inside our world class, I'll say private list location underscore locations equals new list location and then an open parenthesis and close parenthesis. What this will do is it's going to create a locations variable. It's going to be a private variable so it can only be accessed inside the world object and this is going to store a list of locations. If you look up at the top on line two you'll see that we're using system.collections.generic and the collections is how we store multiple objects and generic means we can have this store any type of object we want. In this case, we want it to store location objects. And over here at the, on the right side of the equal sign, I'm instantiating a new list of locations. If we didn't do this, we'd have the private variable to hold the locations, but it would be completely empty. By doing new list location, we're creating an empty list that we can put locations into. And the way we're going to load this list is through the world factory. In this create world, we're going to put some more code so that we actually create our locations, put them into the world, and then have a fully populated world to return. The way we're going to add locations to the world is by creating a new function in the world class. This will be internal void add location. We want this to be internal because the only other class that we want to use this is going to be the world factory class, which is also inside the engine project. The next is the void. When we call this function, we don't want any answer back. We're just putting a location onto the list. Since we don't need to return anything, we can say void. This function doesn't return a value. In order for this function to create a new location, we need to get all the location information. That would be the things like the name, the X and Y coordinates, the description of the location, and the image name of the location. So we need to pass those values in as a parameter to the add location function. We'll do that by saying we want an integer X coordinate, an integer Y coordinate, a string name, string description, and string image name. So when we call this add location function, we're going to pass in the X and Y coordinates, the name of the location, the description, and the image file name. Then we're going to create a new location object and put that into our list. So inside the add location function, I'm going to say location LOC equals new location. Then I'll set the properties on this LOC object with the parameters it received.
we call the add location function, whatever values we pass in as the parameters are going to get put into this new object. And then I'm going to say underscore locations dot add loc. And that will put the newly created location object in our list of locations. So let's go back to the world factory class. In the create world function, I'm going to change this so that we have a world object. Its name will be new world. And I'm going to say return that new world object. So when game session calls factory.createWorld, the create world function is going to instantiate a new world and return it. But now we've got some room in the middle to add our locations to the new world. And I'll do that with new world dot add location. And I'll use these values that we used when we created the home location. So the X coordinate was zero. The Y was minus one. The name was home. The description was, this is your home. And the image name was this long path to the home.png file. And this is how we're going to create all of our locations and add them into the world. Now that we have a way to add locations into the world, we need a way to get the locations out of the world so we can display the information on the screen. I'll go back into the world class and I'm going to create a public location function called location at and it's going to take two parameters an x coordinate and an integer y coordinate. I made this function public because we're going to need to call it from other projects, from the UI project. And this is going to return a location object for whichever location is at the X coordinate and Y coordinate we pass in. What we need to do now in this function is look through all the objects that are in our locations variable and see if one has an X coordinate and Y coordinate that matches the passed in values. If we do have one, we'll return that location. If we don't have one, we're going to return a null, a nothing, which says we can't find a location with these coordinates. When we want to loop through a list, we can use a for each statement. What this for each statement does is it says, look inside each object in the underscore locations list, assign that to a variable called LOC, whose data type is location. Then we can look at the LOC object and see if it matches our criteria. I'm going to say if loc dot x coordinate equals the passed in x coordinate and the two ampersands is an and loc dot y coordinate equals the passed in y coordinate then we're going to return loc this will go through every location object in our underscore locations variable if one of those locations has an x coordinate that matches the passed in x coordinate and a y coordinate that matches the passed in y coordinate we're going to return that location if we don't find one after the for each, we're going to say return null. That means we've checked every location. None of them match the parameters that were passed in. So we're going to return nothing. Now we can go back to the game session class and remove all of this code where we were creating location and setting it to the current location and replace it with current location 
equals current world dot location at zero comma negative one. So now when we create a game session object, we're going to create the world factory, call factory dot create world, which creates this world object and puts in right now just one location and returns the world. Then we have that in our current world property inside the game session class. And now we can say for the current location, go to the current world and give us a location at an X coordinate of zero and a Y of minus one. So now let's try running this, see if the screen still shows us the location. And there it is. I'll add a couple more locations here in the world factory so we can test those. I added two more locations, the farmer's field and the farmer's house. And if you notice, I put these on multiple lines. C Sharp knows that the line is still part of the previous line if until it sees a semicolon. In the description of the video, I'll have a link to the source code where I'm going to go into the World Factory class and add all of our locations. If you have a question about how this works, please leave a comment there or down below, and I'll answer as soon as possible. Thanks.